How many Jews were murdered by Adolf Hitler during the Holocaust? Various records suggest different figures. Yet the most exaggerated is over 6 million. But do you know how many Congolese the King of Belgians, Leopold II, killed during his reign over Congo? Over 10 million. Neither the Holocaust nor Leopold II's brutality can be accepted. But the point is, do Europeans and people criticize Leopold the same way as they do Hitler? Yet Leopold II's horrific atrocities did not end here. During his rule over Congo, he inflicted the worst forms of crimes against humanity that give chills to people. He knew he could not do this in Belgium, his own people. So he decided to play with the lives of millions of Congolese in Congo. Welcome to a new episode of Black Culture Diary, a channel where we talk about less known and hidden black history, culture, arts, and lost civilization. We scrutinize history here to bring the black culture back on the surface again. We would like to thank you, the members of our community who have been watching our videos and supporting us. For those who are new, we encourage you to join our community in supporting and building a strong black history education medium. In this episode, we will explain what terrible brutalities King Leopold II ordered in Congo. Let's get started. In 1869, Henry Morgan Stanley, a British journalist and explorer, ventured forth into the heart of Africa to rescue another lost Englishman, Dr. David Livingston. The good doctor had vanished while chasing the elusive source of the Nile River. Two years of grueling exploration later, Stanley stumbled upon Livingston near modern Tanzania. He found him surrounded by tribesmen, whom Stanley, in all his British irony, labeled as hostile. Their encounter etched their names in the annals of history, as the two men became renowned figures worldwide. But Stanley, not content with mere fame, saw an opportunity in the vast lands he traversed during his search for the missing doctor. Stanley's daring exploits caught the attention of none other than King Leopold II of Belgium, a man of grand ambitions and little conscience. He already had a deep desire to rule like an absolute monarch, where his words were considered orders to be followed with life. But this was not possible in Belgium as people were becoming aware of democracy and debate. The idea of Congo was lucrative and could satisfy the deep evil desires Leopold had. Hence, with a nod from the Belgian government and the approval of other Western European nations, during the infamous Berlin Conference of 1884-85, Leopold simply claimed much of today's Congo for himself. No courtesy was extended to the Congolese people. Leopold declared the land his dominion, and thus the Congo Free State was born. Yet there was irony in the name because, from that day on, Congo was not to stay a free state. Leopold knew how to grease the wheels of his diabolical machine, and he didn't mind borrowing some funds from the Belgian government to solidify his control over this newfound colony. The land became his personal fiefdom, a fiefdom that he exploited with ruthless precision. Congo, 79 times larger than Belgium, transformed into King Leopold's very own cash cow. The ivory trade, once lucrative, proved no match for his insatiable appetite for wealth. Elephants fell like dominoes, victims of unbridled greed. But wait, there's more. A new resource emerged, rubber and so grew the allure of riches. Leopold ordered the Congo to be transformed into his colossal rubber plantation, no matter the human cost. Slavery was illegal in Belgium, but Leopold didn't care about such trivial matters in the Congo. There, his word was law, and he reigned supreme, turning a blind eye to the suffering of the Congolese tribes. As long as the money flowed in from rubber and other resources, Leopold looked the other way indifferent to the atrocities unfolding under his watch. Human lives and tribal cultures were considered mere collateral in the pursuit of wealth. The plight of the Congolese mattered little to Leopold, as long as the prophets filled his coffers. He treated the Congo like his personal playground, disregarding the rights and well-being of its inhabitants. Yet no one cared at that time. It's because the Western European nations and the United States, for all their supposed progress, harbored a toxic underbelly of racism that bled into their African colonies. However, their hate and criticism could not be contained in the case of the Holocaust. Perhaps for them, the cost of lives of European Jews was more than that of Congolese. Yes, they had abolished slavery within their borders, but their treatment of non-white minorities, especially black people, reeked of horrid disdain. And nowhere was this loathsome attitude more evident than in the African colonies, where native people were reduced to second or third class beings in their own lands. 
They were not called citizens, for that would imply some semblance of respect. No, they were ruled and oppressed by outsiders, treated like playthings by their self-proclaimed masters. King Leopold II controlled Congo through his mercenaries. Yet this could not be done unless there were some African tribes on Leopold's side. That's how the colonial powers always do. They find the enemies of the people and get them on their side. Using them, they then rule the land. In history, they write that they did not commit atrocities. Rather, they were their own people. Well, this seems good on the paper, but the reality is what we have told you. Some tribes in Congo were hostile to those working on the rubber plantations and elsewhere. One of them was the notorious Zappo Zappo tribe, a warrior culture from eastern Congo, instilling fear throughout the region. The men of this tribe had a peculiar taste for slaughter, not just during raids, but also in ceremonies. To make matters even more dreadful, they sharpened their teeth, turning their mouths into grotesque displays reminiscent of vampires or cannibals. Yes, you heard right. The Zappo Zappos were cannibals, relishing in the consumption of human flesh. Brains, eyeballs, and other body parts were considered delicacies, and they fried human flesh like bacon. Shocking, isn't it? Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. But it gets worse. These very men, including the Zappo Zappos, formed the Force Publique. This force took orders from Leopold II. The European officers didn't bat an eye at the gruesome practices of the Zappo Zappo tribe as instilling fear was in their favor. Leopold's rule depended on controlling the population through fear, and turning a blind eye to the horrors of his men was just one of many tactics. As reports and testimonials of the atrocities trickled back, the veil of secrecy began to lift. Belgian officers, missionaries, and journalists all bore witness to the horrors and openly discussed the unspeakable acts that unfolded in the Congo. Photographs emerged, spreading like wildfire to England, France, the USA, and Belgium. Faces frozen in smiles, the Zappo Zappos posed proudly in these images. Their brutality laid bare for the world to see. But those pictures were carefully captured to only show Zappo Zappos to be the inflictors of atrocities. The mountains of amputated hands, arms, legs, and feet, mute witnesses to the inhumanity inflicted upon those who failed to meet the rubber quotas, shocked and outraged the Western world. Among these haunting photographs was a heart-wrenching image of a father clutching his young daughter's amputated hand and foot. The man had failed to fulfill the daily rubber quota, so the Belgium forces cut off his daughter's hand and foot. But this did not seem horrifying enough, so they killed her. Still, their thirst did not end. They then killed the wife of the man. The atrocities committed in the Congo were not isolated incidents. They amounted to a genocidal nightmare orchestrated under the reign of King Leopold II. His thirst for wealth and power knew no bounds, and the Congolese people paid the ultimate price for his insatiable greed. The echoes of their suffering remain etched in history as a grim reminder of the heinous exploitation endured under Belgium's rule in the Congo. Under Leopold II, about 10 to 15 million Congolese were murdered, as reported by Atrocities Watch Africa. Hordes of innocent souls were subjected to inhumane treatment, facing beatings, whippings, and a myriad of abuses that left hundreds of thousands succumbing to wounds infected and untreated. Picture the misery of the rubber plantations, where people were chained like beasts, forbidden to leave, and subjected to minimal, substandard rations, if they were lucky enough to get any food at all. Starvation and deadly diseases spread like wildfire among the crowded masses, leading to millions of lives lost during Leopold's reign. But wait, it doesn't end there. Reports and testimonies started trickling out, exposing the gruesome reality of the Congo to the rest of the world. The brave souls who escaped the hellish plantations and journalists working tirelessly to bring attention to the atrocities reached the ears of power in England, France, and the USA. Report on women being raped, villages being burned, Congolese workers getting their hands and feet cut spread like fire. Large protests erupted in Western capitals as the heinous acts in the Congo were rightly labeled a crime against humanity. Belgium, of course, couldn't escape the mounting pressure. They reluctantly took action, relieving Leopold of his precious property, but not without throwing him a princely sum of 50 million francs, a pittance for the blood-soaked lands he had plundered. The investors also had to be appeased with hundreds of millions more, 
And so, Belgium took control, rebranding it as the Belgian Congo, a land scarred by the terrors of the past. But let's not forget Leopold himself, the mastermind behind this reign of terror. Some may attempt to whitewash his legacy, claiming he knew nothing of the horrors in Congo. But don't be fooled. Leopold wasn't just any bystander, he was complicit in the carnage. He read newspapers, and he had aides keeping him informed of the atrocities, and yet he turned a blind eye, choosing to maintain his ill-gotten power. A Belgian prince defended Leopold and said that he never went to Congo. Well, the answer is, Hitler did not go to all places for the Holocaust. He gave orders just like Leopold did. It should be noted that in a fitting act of covering his tracks, Leopold ordered the destruction of all documents on his reign in the Congo. And this proved everything. King Leopold II was thrice the monster Hitler was. He was the butcher of Congo and history will always remember him with these names. How could Leopold II, a human being, order such brutalities? Can you comprehend what their mentality would have been when they were killing millions of Congolese? Let us know your take on this dark chapter of history. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.